Excuse me as I kiss the sky. <laughs> You want to manage your money get out of debt and create financial peace and stability for your family you can get the best finance tips for moms by visiting richsinglemama.com there you can learn where to find the best side hustles how to get some extra cash from home take master classes get parenting tips as well as relationship advice if you talk to the founder samantha gregory let her know that sansa ray sent you okay Listening to the God Queen podcast. Good morning. It is the God Queen Live here. I appreciate you listening to me on Spreaker as well as Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Yo, so listen on my main channel, which is something I've been trying to slowly get back into the groove of doing. Um, I was only going to post like weekly, but then a lot of my fans were like, yo, we need more content than that. So I'm going to try to do every two or three days post something. So maybe every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. And it will all be like 12 noon um, Eastern Standard Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Time. And I'm doing this because my fans want more content and of course with me my audience is like split in half because I have people who still want me to talk about African American issues or sex love and relationships or stuff that I used to talk about on my channel that I no longer talk about and I'm going to try to integrate it into my channel somehow I don't know how I'm going to do it I really don't I mean the fact that I don't even date anymore is one of those things that um, is kind of steering me away from the sex level relationships talk because I'm still healing over my last relationship. And so it's kind of difficult for me to still sit here and talk about uh, sex level relationships. But um, as I go through the healing process, I think about what got me to where I am because I'm pretty much very different than I used to be as far as uh, getting over priest and so just recently I posted a video if you guys, if you guys haven't seen it it's of my son um, and I, I'm actually talking about my playlist and how I want you guys to check out my playlist more so the video is really just based on the playlist that I have on my channel but of course when I'm doing my uh, recaps I'm trying to keep it clear about, you know, what my channel is about. And if there's anyone new that's watching, that's what my recap is for. And so I'm doing that in all of my videos. And in my last upload, I had clips of the live streams that I used to do during my pregnancy. It's clips of me and Priest in there. Uh, when we was in Washington, D.C., it's the clip of him and I doing a live stream together and inside of that live stream that specific live stream we were talking about marriage and kids and how he used to be a player and what made him decide he wanted to be in a relationship with me and this was before all of the gaslighting and manipulation and uh, mind control he tried to do over my audience um by getting onto YouTube himself. And, it, and it's unfortunate that he is that type of narcissist. And of course, 
there are other people out there who, you know, buy into his brand of bullshit. You know, there's guys out there who's like, yo, there's two sides to a story. He's that. He's one of those guys that are like, yo, it's two sides to a story. But yo, in both stories, he's an asshole. So really, at the end of the day, none of that, you know, matters. What he has to say does not matter because he has been extremely dishonest from the beginning. And his dishonesty actually caused a level of betrayal that has been difficult for me to get over. See, getting over the relationship was pretty easy. Getting over a relationship is easy for me. I'm the type of person that I can move forward from a relationship with ease. Because to me, it feels like, to me, if you've done something to make me really just no longer desire being with you, that's it for me. I don't break up and get back together. I don't second guess my decision to break up. My thing is, when I'm inside of a relationship, I do whatever I can to keep us together. And if it comes to a point where I feel like I no longer want to try to be inside of the relationship, once the relationship is over, I don't turn around. And so when when Priest and I was working through our relationship, and uh, what's interesting is I have a on that playlist, on my Priest Plus Ray playlist on my main channel, youtube.com slash fan. it's a live stream on there of me talking about how priest and I are processing my pregnancy and it was before he decided to leave he, we were still together and um, I think he was thinking about leaving and to hear me talk about marriage and kids and my perspective as far as if he did walk away it's an interesting um, you know thing to listen to so you should check it out but Desiring being with him was no longer something I wanted to do when he did walk away. Like when he called me from work and said, I think I still have feelings for Sedonia. I don't want our baby. I don't want to be in a relationship. And my response was, okay. By this time, I was already so turned off by all of the things that he was doing in the relationship that it was easy for me to agree that it was over. You know, like, okay, we mutually feel like this. So clearly, we're just wrong for each other. You know what I mean? But I think that people think because I used a clip of him just recently that that must mean I'm not over him. And I saw somebody put that in my comment section. It was just like, you know, getting over my my uh, son's father is not what the problem is. The problem is getting over the betrayal so that I am able to trust someone else once I decide to get in a new relationship. And I knew when things were breaking up with us and how he abandoned me there, which added insult to injury because had he just you know decided that he wanted to leave and the relationship was over and he was still kind of like trying to be there for his son I believe that it would have been an easier you know process to to co-parent you know and it would have been easier for me to get over you know the hump of me like being a baby mama because I think the hump of the 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 trauma or the I don't know, disappointment, I want to say, not trauma, disappointment of becoming a single mother or someone, some dude's baby mama. It was like disgusting to me because first of all, the term baby mama is so negative. You know, people put a negative connotation on top of baby mama and they expect these baby mamas to be ghetto and not, you know, educated and living in poverty. And I'm none of those, you know, I'm an educated woman. I have a wonderful job I have side hustles I do my thing I go out there and I work and I work and I work you know that's how I operate and I'm always going to be that type of person as long as I have my health you know so as I sit down and I build like generational wealth for my kids and I turn around and I look and I see that my son's father is not taking care of our son justice it's like that adds insult to injury so when I was going through, you know, what I was going through as far as adapting to him no longer being there, that's not the part that I'm having a difficult time with. And I remember when I was going through it and I said on my YouTube channel, I said, this is going to be something that I'm going to have a, have a difficult time getting over because it's a number of factors 
that's an issue. It's not just, oh, he broke up with me. It's not just, oh, he wanted to get back with his ex. That's two different things right there. One is, oh, he broke up with me. Two, oh, he wanted to get back with his ex. Three, he just told me he didn't want our baby. Okay. Four, he abandoned me in a hotel while I was severely ill. Five, he won't man up to the fact that he did that. He's doing a lot of gaslighting and manipulation. Six, he's humiliated me in front of the public. And then when I defend myself against that, everyone's like, oh, you know, constantly blaming the single mother, just like society always does. You shouldn't have dealt with him. How about hold this man accountable? for the choices that he's made instead of continuing to encourage women to make all of these changes so that they can avoid, you know, running into a man who would choose something like that. Like, don't you think women, if we meet men and they come off as the type of bastard that would abandon them with a child, don't you think women would run? Because I know me, I'm running. I'm running. It's no reason in the world why a man who I know is a shit stain (laughs) is going to have the opportunity to get me pregnant in no form of fashion and so out of the many conversations that you know I had with my son's father about marriage about kids about him being an honest man him being a better man um he chose to be a bad person and that's the difficult thing that I'm having to deal with. And, and a lot of my friends and family are like, you can't really control the choices or decisions that someone else makes. And even though Priest and I had the conversations of him becoming a better person, it's a disappointment that he would choose to be the bad person. He would choose to continue to be dishonest. He would choose to not go get his education. He would choose You know, not being stable. You know what I'm saying? And so that that is what is 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 difficult to me. Um, but let's say I was still struggling with getting over the relationship. Okay, let's just say I was struggling getting over the relationship. All right, let's say if that was like some type of big issue I was having, okay. To me, I believe that in order to get over anything, you have to take your time to grieve. If you're trying to rush through something, it's not going to work. If you if you're trying to force yourself to get over something, it's not going to work. I am not the type of person that is going to try to rush myself to get over someone and get in a relationship with someone else because then I'll have things that I needed to repair within myself, that shit will turn into baggage that I'll bring into a new relationship. And I don't want to blame a new man for something priest did. You see what I'm saying? And grieving is a process. It's not a destination. It's it's a process. And I remember when priest and I first broke up, I mean, weeks after our relationship, people were like, you need to get over it, blah, 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 as if they've got over their situation with so much ease no one does that no human being gets over a relationship that they were emotionally invested in in a couple of days you can sit here and pretend all day you can sit here and act like you don't feel nothing all day it's just a front and anyone who has been in a relationship with someone and they claim they were in love or they claim that they cared about someone or they had some level of emotions for someone, if they get out of the relationship and they move on swiftly, they were not emotionally invested in the situation to begin with. Like say for instance, if Priest, when Priest and I broke up and he decided to get in a new relationship, and this is what he would do. He would send me em- emails claiming he was in a new relationship with a better woman, which was really all bullshit. He, he never sent me an email that said, oh, I'm back with Sonia and her and I. I said, Sonia, I don't even know why I call that girl's name. Sidonia. I'm not, he never sent me an email that said, hey, I'm back with Sidonia and her and I are just happy together and blah, blah, blah. It was always emails that he would send me to where he would try to make me feel bad about myself. Or he'd say, he'll tell me that he's with a new woman who's better than me and all this stuff. And, and it was lies. I mean, he would just say whatever he could to hurt me. Say, for instance, 
priest was inside of our relationship and he decided to leave and be with another woman and he moved on swiftly he never genuinely cared about me at all you know the fact that he wanted to put our situation at risk to begin with to me says he didn't care about me at all but if he was to move on from someone swiftly and be in a whole full-blown relationship with someone else I would feel like he wasn't uh, emotionally invested in me Um, because when you when you're in the grieving process because something is over you have to be patient because what you're doing is getting over something that was meaningful in your life and it's difficult to get over that I am over the relationship, right? Because I don't like some of the things that he did. But the fact that the relationship was meaningful in my life, getting over that is difficult. See, our relationships with each other as human beings are most of the time special to us, especially with women. And we rely on them because they're part of our social lives. You know, they assist us with survival. And my relationship was important to me. It was vital. And I was taking it very serious. It was the central point of my everyday life and so getting over that grieving is a unique experience for everyone so each person has something different and has a different for behavior when they grieve so sometimes when men are trying to get over a relationship and they jump into a new situation with another woman that is them trying to get over the grief of the previous relationship so each person is is very different and I think men handle their grief different from women and one thing I think people tend to forget is that there is no set timing to when you have to get over someone and I knew, I said, this is going to take me a while to get over because of the betrayal. It, it's something um, that's assist, that, that is, is I want to say, um, let's see, in other words, I want to say, it's something that goes with, you know, the breakup. Not just the breakup itself, but the other things that are orbiting around this breakup. You know what I mean? That the residue that's associated with it. And, and that's what I'm dealing with right now. And I want to success, successfully move on. You know, if I rush, I'll fail at moving on and it'll bring issues and baggage into a new relationship. I am dealing with the disorientation of what happened to me before I stepped foot in a new relationship. And so another part that I'm dealing with as far as getting over uh, the betrayal is that one thing that I understand like like I said in the a minute ago getting over something that was meaningful in your life is difficult so those who have a meaningful life like a sense of purpose we know that when we lose someone we lose something meaningful for ourselves our marriages our relationships our relationships with our children our relationships with our employer or our co-workers or our friendships, those things are valuable to us because we feel like everything has meaning. Everything has purpose. There's a there's a calling behind every single thing that we do. So if we get inside of a situation with someone, we don't want to feel like we wasted our time and I feel like sometimes and this is something that I'm getting over I feel like sometimes that period of time I spent with him was him wasting my time where I could have been with a man who genuinely loved me like I said before in a previous um video I could have had a baby by someone who genuinely loved me not him someone who genuinely loved me deserved having a baby with me not him you see what I'm saying? And so I have to deal with the fact that he portrayed himself as someone who deeply cared for me. And then we had a baby and I found out he never genuinely cared for me. That's an issue. So it's not the relationship. It's not that I miss him. It's more of, damn, I have to deal with that. And because, you know, who I have a baby with is so meaningful to me. Because it's him. That's something I have to I have to get over. And it's a lot of women out here who have babies all willy-nilly just by any man. No, it's important to me. 
who I have children by. You understand? I'm not just going to have children by some guy, you know. And for the many years, many, many years that I went trying to have a child by a better man and I couldn't. It's just like, wow, the way that the universe works, there was something that my son needed in priests in order for him to become like a better person. Even the birth of my son by someone that I classify as unworthy of such an experience, I still found something meaningful out of it as if, you know, the purpose of my son being here, right? He has a sense of purpose. To me, he is a miracle child. I went years, years, years of not being fertile enough to have a baby. And in under a year, I ended up getting pregnant by this clown. What is so purposeful and meaningful about priests that my son needs in order for my son to be, you know, whatever it is that he's going to be or whatever it is that he's going to uh, become. And that's what I've been putting a lot of my focus on, you know, like the good things about my son. And um, that's part of the healing process as well. Um, finding what you love and finding out what brings you joy and what brings more meaning. You know what I mean? to you a, a, a new sense of meaning because the relationship was meaningful and now that that's gone it's it was a void right there so I replaced that void with the meaningful relationship that I have with my son you see what I'm saying and that has helped the process the grieving pro process and of course I'm I miss reflection right because I like to I like to self-reflect and self-evaluate all the time that's my thing I love to do that and it's because I want to improve who I am. And I feel like everything around me, um, I could change into something more positive with so much ease. And so when I take an objective look at what my relationship with priest was like, I try not to only remember the things that fit into whatever story I want to believe in that present moment. Like, for instance, a lot of people feel like when I was telling the story of my son's father and everything I said was negative, that I was only remembering the things that fit into whatever story I wanted to believe at that present moment. And because I was feeling so negative, I wanted to tell a negative story. But what a lot of people overlooked was a lot of the positive things I kept saying that he was doing when we was together. Like, I still remember the stuff that I enjoyed about my relationship. You know, a lot of times, like if if we're angry, everything that we remember or say about our relationship is negative. And then once we are completely over the emotion associated with whatever caused the breakup, we remember the good times most because that's what we want our reality to be right now. You know, we all want to be happy and have a good life. That's what moving on is about. Basically, just getting happy and, and being comfortable and living life. But one thing that I noticed about myself as I, I sit down and do, you know, self-reflection, as I was telling stories about my son's father, when I was talking about priests, I would talk about all of the things that I enjoyed and all of the positivity inside of the relationship that was no longer there. So... I had a healthy perspective. I had a healthy, objective look at my previous relationship. And a lot of people don't have that. And a lot of people didn't give me credit for that when they would listen to me talk about him. Because they'd be like, you're talking about him so bad. Yeah, because I'm telling you what he's doing now. What he used to be was amazing to me. If you look at older videos, you hear me talk about him so, you know, I uplifted that man. I spoke to him uh, I, and about him so graciously and with so much respect and understanding. And because I put so much positive energy into him and that relationship, because it was so meaningful and purposeful and important to me, the fact that it went the way that it did was so sad. It was so unfortunate. And because it made me feel so bad, I had to do what... 
average people don't do when they're moving on. I had to face my feelings and accept that I was feeling them instead of avoiding how I felt. Because to me, avoiding how you feel doesn't help you move on fast at all. And I knew this was going to be a hard process. I knew it was going to take me a while to move on. So I had to face how I felt. I had to say, this is how I felt, feel. This is what I'm thinking. Um, this is how I'm dealing with it. And I had to take it one step at a time. Because if you hear me back then and you hear me now... The way that I sound, like, it's times where I listen to myself, I'm like, yo, I was so angry. I was so angry. And I think about how angry I was back then and and how um, I'm not as angry. Um, As I've been doing the, having this objective look um, of my relationship, I realized, like I said at the beginning of the podcast, that relationships don't end because two people did something wrong to each other. Yeah, Priest did something wrong. Yeah, I was the innocent party in this situation. Yeah, I was honest. I was good to him. I was catering. I was loving. I was, you know, all of the things I needed to be inside of my relationship. I had a level of respect for him. I was supportive. I was, you know, uh, having goals and aspirations for the relationship. And I always looked at our situations as it was he and I versus the problem. Never he versus I you know what I mean I never looked at it like that but I I do realize that you know and most people don't realize that relationships don't end because two people did something wrong to each other they end because two people are something wrong for each other he and I are wrong for each other because I have standards and expectations right I have expectations for myself okay I have standards as far as my partner goes so so when you have expectations and standards for your partner don't think because that person did not reach those standards that though that must mean that your standards are too high or you don't deserve what you desire. You do deserve what you desire. Only you know what you need inside of a relationship. And just because priests couldn't reach those standards in relationships, I mean, uh, those standards and requirements doesn't mean I don't deserve the type of man that I want or was looking for or thinking I had in him. And. He just happens to be the wrong person. Like you are asking from your partner what you want from them. So keep in mind, you might simply be asking the wrong person. So when I was coming to him, you know, telling him what I wanted in our relationship, being very communicative, being very open, very verbal, you know, very understanding, listening, you know, being honest and open emotionally, sharing intimacy with him and requiring that he does that in return. And he was not being that to me, but was portraying himself to be that. I just realized he wasn't the right person that I was asking all of these things from. Just like now, I can't go to him and expect him to be like this amazing father to our son because he's not that. You, The standards and requirements that I have as far as someone fathering my child, like you know, as a single mom, I want certain things like call your son. We don't live in the same state. You live in Georgia. I live in California. I probably would have stayed in Georgia, Georgia had he been more um, involved in the pregnancy and stuff like that. So I'm in California now. At least call your son. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, at least check up on your son. Come visit your son, you know, and if we lived in the same state, let's say, for instance, we we both lived in Georgia, come pick up your son, play with your son, get to know your son, you know, things like that, like be honest and communicative so that we can have a a, a healthy, smooth co-parenting experience, you know, let's, let's do that, you know. I feel like what I'm asking for, as far as my son goes, for him to be protected and provided for, when I realized that priests could not do those things for me, I knew he was unable to do that for a child. I knew he was going to give excuses. 
excuses and reasons why he couldn't do that for a child. And people really was upset with me when I was like, listen, I would prefer for him to sign his parental rights away. I don't want to have anything to do with him because what he's going to try to do is have me chasing him around Atlanta, begging him to be a father. I'd rather him just be out of the picture altogether. And a lot of people was upset about that because they felt like I shouldn't think that way. And I was like, yo, he's already proven that he's not a provider. He hasn't protected me. He's got on the social media, you know, being verbally abusive and lying and manipulating people. He's showing me who he is. And he's not just showing me he's a terrible ex or he's uh, not a good husband or not a good boyfriend he's showing me that he has no respect for family orientation he has no respect for the mother of his child men listen let me tell you something about good fathers a good father can break up with the mother of his child right and still have a level of respect for her because she's the mother of his child but there are men out there who have a lack of critical thinking skills, a lack of respect for family, a lot of a lack of respect for themselves. And they'll look at the mother of their child and say, oh, I don't have to respect her. I just have to take care of my child. No, what you have to do is respect the mothers of your child. And it's the same thing with women. We mothers have to respect the fathers of their children because their children grow up seeing that interaction. So if you don't have a level of respect for each other during the co-parenting experience, then your children are going to grow up and be terrible people because their parents were terrible. So the first example of a decent relationship that your children see is the relationship that their mother and father have with each other. We ain't got to sit here and be all buddy-buddy, but we do have to sit here and be cordial, calm, and cool for our kids. And because Priest did not understand it, but led everybody to believe that he had a sense of understanding, it's weird to me. I don't even know why he would, would do something like that. But anyway, so again, if you're asking your, you are asking for your partner what you want from them. So keep in mind, you might just simply be asking the wrong person. You may need to simply move on and heal and find someone better for you. This time of looking at my relationship objectively, I also spent time investing in myself, in my relationship with, with myself. And that's another reason why it's taking so much time. The process of me grieving is taking so much time because I also am investing in myself. Healing is a process. So now I have to decide, okay, my last relationship, who was I in that relationship? And who am I now? What did I learn from that relationship that's making me have to require something else in a new situation? Okay. And one thing that was so helpful in the healing process was the fact that I moved 2,000 miles away from Georgia. I moved from Georgia to California. And one of the things that I said at the beginning of the live stream is that, I mean, the podcast is that I don't turn around. And that's one of the things that people who get out of these relationships need to understand. Like, don't go back to your partner, even if you have a choice to. That's why I moved. You know, the relationship ended for a reason. And unless it's obvious that this reason has been like resolved or it definitely won't happen again, then I think it's better if you move on with your life. A lot of times we give people chances over and over and over and over and over and over, hoping that the situation is resolved or praying that it won't happen again. No, it has to definitely not happen again. And after the first time, Priest left me in the hotel talking about he needed a break and he kind of left again. It was like he was straddling the fence like he wanted one foot in a relationship the other foot out here in these streets messing around with other women and so I was just observing him and I was like I'm seeing a pattern and I'm seeing an issue not resolved even though we continue to keep talking about the same thing and what I noticed was the problem that he the problem was that he did not want to invest 
time in the relationship he had with himself. And I was sitting there looking at him like, you need to get your shit together for you. Not just me, but for you. You need to understand who you are, who you want to be, what you want to do with your life. You need to do this for you and you need to get it into gear very quickly because you're almost 40 years old and you're sitting here and you're behaving like you're 25. You are 40, about to be 40. You need to pull it together. And I was looking at him like be so confused about what he wanted. And I was like, I don't have time for this because I'm one of those people where I feel like I have a meaningful, purposeful life. I literally do not have time to be playing around and so when I noticed that he was like playing with my life I was like we have a problem like he playing with his own life so I know he's not going to take my life serious or my son's life serious and I just kept observing him and I kept saying to him the same thing like I really just would like to work on our family I don't necessarily want to be in a relationship with anybody else you know I, I really love you I really care for you I really want this to work these were things I was saying to him And I was just like being a good woman. And I realized that a lot of the mistakes that he was making, like a lot of the times when he would be dishonest and he would promise me that it wouldn't happen again, he would turn around and he would do it again. And I was just like, this is an issue. Like every time I think we have resolved something, it it shows me that he is not working on himself improving. And that for me is a deal breaker because my thing is, as long as you're trying and as long as you are making an improvement, because I do it every day, I'm not asking for something I don't already do. I already have what I'm asking for. You know, even now, like now, if I was to date a guy, he has to have more than one home. Okay, he has to have a car, he has to have a decent job, he has to have side hustles, he has to have a level of respect for himself. I'm not asking for something I don't already have. I'm a provider. I provide for my family. I protect my family. So I'm expecting a man that enters into my life to be that same thing. Also, as my son gets older, I start getting more rated G. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I I slow down on the profanity. Um, I have a lot more patience as far as um, flying off the handle. Like, I used to cuss somebody out off break. Now, it's like, I don't have energy for that. I got too much going on. I don't have time to be taking off focus of what it is that I'm doing. You feel what I'm saying? I want a better life for myself. So, I'm, I'm doing the process processes associated with becoming a better person you know with my spirit and my vocabulary and my language and my attitude and my emotions I just show a great deal of self-discipline and I do that because my son my son is watching me so I as I'm growing my son is growing I'm growing you see what I'm saying and I have to be that I have to be that and I do literally do not have time dealing with someone who is not in the process of improvement every day. Now, remember what I said at the beginning of the podcast that I am now finding a new source of meaning. And my son is one of the best ways to find a new meaning in my life. And that's how people move on. You know, you move on by finding a new meaning because the the relationship that was meaningful is now gone. So you have to do something to replace that void. And so you have to find things that you love and that you're passionate about. And doing things with my kids make me happy. So I do that. You know, doing my videos handling my graphic design business. I'm not, not going to necessarily say I love going to work every day, but, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's better than doing nothing. You know what I mean? Um, one of the things that <clears throat> being a single mom, I'm glad I don't have to deal with is the extra complications and emotions that come with co-parenting and have a man that I had a failed relationship with in my child's life. Because one of the things that I know when two people are just broken up out of a relationship, right? You know all of the bad things about that person. Like, you know that they lie. Like, for example, I know Priest is a liar. He's been dishonest. He's 
the funny thing is he's been honest about being dishonest. It's so weird. Right? He's a selective is selective about when he wants to be honest. He's manipulative, unstable. He has all of these negative traits. He's abusive verbally, very much so. Um, he's just a nasty, mean, cruel person. I, I tell you all the time, he's Luciferian. And I didn't start seeing who he truly was until after I got pregnant. Because the person that he was pretending to be was not who he was. And when he took that mask off, he's so ugly underneath. He's such an ugly person underneath. And so, when you've been in a relationship with somebody and you have children together and y'all break up. And you know all of the ugly characteristics that they have. And you think about them being with your children alone. You're like, oh crap, I wonder what they're teaching my child. And then there's a possibility that you could see those same characteristics in your child. Oh my God, that is terrifying to me. So I'm glad I don't have to deal with the extra complications and emotions associated with the co-parenting experience that he and I will have. That would definitely be toxic because he is a toxic person who refuses to work on himself. Like when you're dealing with someone who doesn't have goals and aspirations, I know you've had to to meet someone like this. If you're listening to this, I know you've had to meet someone where you're confused as to why they seem so complacent and they barely are making it. Like, and you're like, you don't have any goals or aspirations and you're not working towards anything. Like, you don't have any type of plan or strategy. I remember, let me give you an example. I posted a video the other day about Uber. Right, I was talking about how much I make in San Francisco in the Bay Area as far as Uber goes. Damn, I haven't drove driven Uber in days. Oh my god, it's been like Saturday. Today's Wednesday, right? Oh my god, I haven't driven Uber in days. Anyway, I probably drive Uber this weekend. Anyway, so damn, it feels like a long time. So, <laughs> so anyway, um. I was talking about how much money I make and, you know, being very honest about my experience. And every single Uber driver has a different experience because of how they do things, of how their strategy is. And so this girl comes into my comment section and she says, you put so much energy, basically uh, too much of a strategy into something that's a side hustle. And I was like, I know this is a troll. I don't even know why I'm about to answer this because usually trolls like here's the thing I noticed about trolls trolls like overthink shit like they take it so extra for nothing and they want everything like their perspective of reality is so negative so even if you're saying something positive to them they're going to think of something negative about it no matter how honest you are about it they're going to think you're lying anyway so it doesn't matter right and so I was like thinking to my she was like you put such a strategy and and a side hustle and in my mind I was thinking I already know this is a person saying oh there's no way you could be doing this as a side hustle this must be your full-time gig now this is what I assumed from just reading the comment like sometimes some comments that I read I can tell how snide they are by you know I I don't know I guess the energy associated with it because I could have perceived that comment in so many different ways but I perceived it as oh she's trying to say you know I put too much energy into something that's a side hustle and so I said to her I replied back and someone else replied back to her too I said you know I don't really have time right I do not have the luxury being a single mom, basically, is what I was saying. Being a single mom and taking care of myself, I don't have the luxury to sit around and waste energy aimlessly just doing something. I have to know how I'm going to make money. How is it going to be lucrative for me? Is it going to take up a lot of my time? What is it that I'm going to do? You know, like, with, like I'm not going to just be driving Uber and wasting my time aimlessly not sure about how much money I can make because I know people that hop in a car and be like oh let's see how much money I can make today no I know what I need to do in order to make a certain amount of money before I even leave the house I know if I want to leave the house and I want to make $200 in a day I know how I'm going to do that okay and I'm strategic like that with everything and so someone else comes into my comment section and says, she's strategic like that with everything. Sounds very strategic like that with everything. And so when I went back into my held for review 
comments, which usually have a lot of replies. Like the young lady was replying back to me. And of course, I, this is when I found out she was a troll because her response to me saying I strategize everything was like, basically, you're lying. Stop being dishonest. We know this is your full time job. Let me tell you something. Uber will never be anybody's full time job. I don't know how anybody could do Uber full time. You see what I'm saying? Like, because it's not it's not a job. You know what I mean? Like you are not an employee and you have an employer. That's not what ride share is at all so it'll never be a full-time gig for me that's not something like if you do it you know that no this is not this will always be something you can do on the side now if you decide to be a professional driver that's another thing like if you're a limo driver or a taxi cab driver or something like that and this is literally what you do because you're a professional driver then knock yourself out you know there's a lot of transportation companies out here i worked for a transportation company when i was doing uber wave when I was driving around disabled people. So, of course, you know, that makes sense to me. But if you're doing ride share on the side and you're not a professional driver, there's no way you're going to be able to do, do that um, as a full-time gig because you don't make enough money doing it as a full-time gig. And so, anyway, um, the energy that I put in to being strategic as far as my job goes... I'm doing that as well as relationships go, as well as side hustles go, as well as businesses go, as well as parenting goes. All of it is strategic, everything. And if you don't have enough sense to be strategic with everything, your life is going to be fucked up in so many different areas. And I remember there were times where I was winging it and didn't have a strategy. And because sometimes you have to, like sometimes I'll go to the universe and I'll say, listen, my strategy for this didn't work. So come, I'm, I'm asking you to help me with this. And then the universe will kick into gear. But most of the times I have a strategy for everything and they work. And so what I notice about a lot of people is they don't have enough sense to put a strategy together to move forward in anything that they do. And then they wonder why their life is the way that they is the way that it is they wonder why they're on the internet trolling someone <laughs> they got too much time on their hands anyone who strategizes their life we have too much time to i mean we're putting too much time into strategizing and implementing ideas and doing stuff to help our lives improve we don't have time to, to sit around and um, do things that don't have anything to do with that and so um a lot of times when women get inside of these relationships with men, they don't strategize. They don't have like a plan. They don't require that this must be going somewhere. Don't waste my time. I have something I'm trying to accomplish. And if you aren't trying to be on that train, then you need to bounce. A lot of women are like that with their career, but not inside of their relationships with men. And it just so happens with me. I'm like that with my career, my side hustles, my kids, who I'm in a relationship with. I avoided relationships for many, many years before I got with Priest. Many years. And there was a reason why I was avoiding it. Because I felt like it was not beneficial to my life. And when I met Priest, I didn't want a relationship. He didn't want a relationship. And so, when we got together... We got together because we wanted each other specifically. And this is what he led me to believe. It wasn't because we just wanted a relationship. You know, a lot of people who just want a relationship or a marriage, they'll just be like that with anybody. You know what I mean? It's just easy for them to be like that with anybody. And for me, because I didn't want to be in a relationship for so many years, when I got in a relationship with him, it's because I wanted to be in one with him specifically, you know? And so as I try to date again, right, where I getting myself to the point where I'm ready to seriously date someone and that's difficult and I'd be thinking about it but then once I think about it too much beyond the point of uh, of us just sitting around kicking and going to restaurants to, with each other or going to um, the farmer's market or going to you know events or some concert or something like that once I start thinking about intimacy I get scared but here's the harder part about me considering taking someone serious. What's difficult is finding someone worthwhile. That is not easy. 
at all. Like finding someone here, here it is finding someone else that I want to be in a relationship with more than I wanted to be in a relationship with priests. Finding that is difficult because I am not easy to impress. OK, I'm not walking around here and just with any guy. It is difficult to get me to be impressed by some man. And when I met Priest, it was difficult for him to get me impressed. And he just, he had to pretend. That says a lot right there. This man had to pretend to be something in order to get my attention because who he truly was would have never worked. It would have never worked. Because I'm not the type of chick that just falls in love with just any guy. You literally have to be a better version of me on so many levels in order for me to be impressed by you and what impressed me most about priest was his spirituality which i now know is fake it's pseudo you know the fake woke let me put on an unk be conscious and shit that was not real and it's unfortunate to me I mean, and what was also impressive to me, he used to know, he used to be Hebrew Israelite, and he used to know the Bible so well. And I used to be like, man, this man knows the Bible like better than me. And I used to be a minister. I'm like, yo, I love this guy. And the stuff that we would sit down and talk about and how we would be, you know, do a whole bunch of recreational stuff together and hike and hang out. He was very sociable. And I love that. I love that. And so trying to find someone who was all of the things that priests pretended to be and it actually be that person's character and not them pretending to be it is difficult to find because even finding a guy who who can pretend that well was different difficult a guy who could pretend to be different and impress me it's hard to find So for me to find a man who is actually all those things and more now that I've learned what I really need, it's difficult to find. But I understand that all of this is part of a learning experience and we all see the world from a different lens based on our own experiences and the stories that we tell ourselves. Okay, and we tell ourselves stories so that our experiences make sense for our own narratives. Okay, and and this goes back to what I was saying um, a minute ago where I was talking about um, how we remember things that fit into whatever story we want to believe at the present moment. So if we're angry, everything that we remember or say about our relationship is negative. And then once we are completely over the emotion associated with whatever caused the breakup, we remember the good times most because that's what we want our reality to be right now. We all want to be happy and have a good life. And that's what moving on is about. I think that's the reason why people tell themselves a story in their mind like you know how when you break up with someone and you replay it in your mind and you're trying to make sense of why things went the way that they did and why this person acted this way or said this or did this or blah 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 and you start trying to make sense of it so you can accept what what happened a lot of people do that a lot of people need a relationship, a failed relationship to fit their narrative so it can be easier to process and for me I never had like to make up a story to be able to accept the breakup like of course I couldn't understand like initially at first I couldn't understand why things were going the way that they were but then when he started to say like he was getting online saying it and towards the end of our relationship he started to be honest about how he didn't care about me then things started to make sense. So I didn't have to create a narrative of my own, a false narrative about our experience. So I had to be like extremely honest and transparent about the situation so that other people can learn and be able to, um, you know, new, move forward after seeing my experience, especially women. And so even to this day, like when I do talk about it, It's never because I can't get over it. It's not that. It's talking about it, helping other people along the way, being honest about it, 
is helping me be a better person and it's helping someone else be a better person. And my reasoning behind doing it has nothing to do with him. And if you see a picture of us that I posted on my channel um, in a video, it's not posted because I'm trying to hurt him. I remember one chick said, you're posting video about priests when he asked you not to. I was like, number one, he ain't asked me shit. Me and him ain't never sat down. I had a conversation about him uh, no longer being on my channel because we haven't even had a conversation. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, I think it's fucking hilarious that you actually think that I give a fuck about what he wants. <laughs> Like, give it a fuck about what he wants or his future or what he's doing or what he needs or all things that I cared about when I was in a relationship with him. Now that I'm low, no longer with him, I don't care what he wants. Like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? What are he going to do? If I post a picture of him that he voluntarily took or video that he voluntarily put himself in, what he going to do about it? Nothing. Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't care about that. I don't care about what he wants. And it's funny that people, I remember when we were breaking up, people wanted me to protect him and, and care about him after he didn't abandon me, trashed me, disrespected me, abused me, lied to me, then lied to the public, humiliated me. Did all of these horrible things to me and my family. And people saying out here, oh, you should still protect him. Stop. Why? For what? That's like... <laughs> Listen, it reminds me of that Brotham guy that was killed by that white officer lady. And then Brotham's brother came and hugged her like she didn't kill his brother. That's what that reminds me of. Like, I'm not... Listen, if you Christians out there want to be all forgiving and stuff, I am not Jesus, okay? I could try to be forgiving as time goes by, but it's been two years and I have yet to forgive him in a full nature that everybody else would expect me to. Forgiveness, I forgive him to a level to where I forgive you and the process and keep your distance. Not... I forgive you. Come on into my home. Take care of my child. Be around justice. No, I have not forgiven him on that level. I do not trust him around my son. And I'm not going to give a fuck about what he wants. I don't care. And for the people who listen to this and it doesn't apply to them, I don't even know why they listen to it. Because my material is for people who it applies to, who can learn something from it. I am not investing my energy into people who disagree or to people who aren't supportive or to people who have something negative and smug to say about everything that I say. That's not why I'm creating my content. My content is for the people it applies to, for the ladies that may be going through this. Or the people that maybe are just listening because they find what I'm saying entertaining. If you don't find it entertaining or it doesn't apply to you, please understand that just how it's not for you. I'm not putting my energy into you. Just how this isn't for you. It's not a, you know, a, a two way street here with you. OK, specifically, it's just not for you. And that's respectable. Um, I tell people, you know. Not watching my channel or not listening to my podcast and stuff like that. If it doesn't apply to you, that makes sense. Because there's a lot of people out there that it could not apply to. But then there's an esoteric group of people that my stuff is for. And those are the people that I want to put my energy into. Those are the, the men and women that I want to listen to my message and respect what I'm saying. Because the, at the end of the day, what I am talking about is... Helping people move on and improve and be better and be able to not be so judgmental of themselves, so critical of themselves and that it's okay to have regular human emotion to where you're negative and you're angry and you're hurt and you're sad and 
Accept that you feel that way. Just how I did. Accept that you feel that way so you can move on. Because the more you try to pretend like you don't feel that way, the longer it's going to take you to move on fully. And I refuse. I refuse to let the terrible stuff that priests did to me cause me to treat another man that's new in my life like he ain't shit. Or I'm coming into a situation with trust issues. No. I'm going to heal completely. And part of the healing process is you being able to admit how you feel, feel how you feel, accept that you feel that way, and talk about it. And once you get to a place where you're talking about all of this stuff and you no longer feel any anger, any emotion, any frustration, or nothing negative, you know that you fully moved on from that situation. Okay? That's the lesson that I'm teaching. (laughs) Just in case you was confused. So anyway, make sure that you tune in to my YouTube channel. I'm going to try to post more. Um, My podcast as well. I'm going to try to um, podcast more. I have so much going on in my life. So it's kind of hard to keep up. But I promise... I will stay consistent (laughs) because I know it's people out here that that love to hear me speak and love to hear me motivate and inspire and teach. And those are the people that I want to focus on. And those are the people that deserve my energy and my time. If you're ever out here wondering what I'm doing, please understand that I'm out here capturing that good energy, baby. I'm out here doing everything. This week, me and my kids are going to a pumpkin patch. I'm probably going to post that content (laughs) on my channel. That's going to be interesting. So anyway, I appreciate everyone being very supportive. Like what I'm doing. Love what I'm doing. Share it. Tell a friend. Hopefully it provokes some thought. If you have anything, any comments or concerns you can email me at saucerygmail.com um my admins and i are very selective about what we allow inside of my comment section it is important that people have self-respect and discipline and show intellect inside of my comment section because i think the world needs to see a lot of intellect and less trolling and belligerence and negativity. I don't want that anywhere near my channel. So if you have something positive to to say, we will be happy. We will be happy to leave it in the comment section. But make sure you're respectful. And we're not talking about slick little shade. Because people like to give slick shade too. No slick shade because we delete that too. If it even seemed like it's slick shade, we delete it. This is a positive place. And my energy is different. And I'm attracting positive people. None of the negativity that I experienced within the past couple of years is acceptable and it wasn't acceptable when it was happening and it's a shame to me that so many people felt comfortable with being so cruel to me during my pregnancy being so ugly and malicious and manipulative I mean and there's still people out there that's like that it's still people out there that feel the need to say something negative about me and those people are so unimportant the focus is on the people who have enough discipline to sit down and not be so judgmental and critical of another human being and can also have enough self-respect and discipline to be able to come into someone's comment section and speak intellectually okay Um, I don't like confrontation either. A lot of times people try to come into my comment section and be confrontational. um, Because uh, people are very passionate about their point of views. And I just feel like there's a way that you can speak to someone 
um, even if you disagree, without you having to be so like what you're saying is dripping with disdain, disrespect, and, and just because you're not using profanity doesn't mean that you're not being disrespectful. Like a lot of people think, oh, I'm just gonna leave profan- for profanity out of this and she's just not gonna delete my comment. No, the tone in your comment, like people can usually tell, me I read energy. I'm an energy reader. I, I said, listen, how many times do I have to talk about how Priest was my spiritual husband? I still to this day don't understand how I didn't read his energy. And one day I'm gonna do a video about that tiger's eye that that spiritual guy gave me and it gave me clarity like when the second he gave me that tiger's eye I started seeing priest for who he was because before that I didn't see it and he gave me that tiger's eye oh my god <laughs> that's a whole nother that's a whole nother video so anyway keep your comments clean and intellectual um Meanwhile, if you're not coming here to meanwhile, then we don't want to hear from you, okay? I appreciate those who love and support me. Have vision and stay focused, guys. Namaste.